The S&P 500 is up 12% so far this year, and that's after jumping 26% last year. We're constantly bombarded with how well tech and chip and AI stocks are all doing. It's easy to forget that these are just a handful of stocks. There are hundreds of other stocks, and many are good buys. And this is what I wanted to talk to you about today. I've found five really strong stocks, stocks that are strong long-term investments that are in a dip, and you may want to consider taking advantage. We're starting off with what I see as the biggest value of the five stocks that I'll talk about in this video. PayPal is down 79% since peaking at 308 bucks in 2021. It's currently trading at 67 bucks a share. It all started with the pandemic. Like all other technology stocks, it went on a tear during the lockdown period of the pandemic due primarily to the liquidity that was pumped into the real economy by the US Treasury and Federal Reserve PayPal jumped 151% from 2020 to the middle of 2021, and then shit hit the fan. It first started with earnings misses due to slowing revenues and rising headcount costs. And then eBay moved away from them as their preferred online payments platform. Shortly thereafter, their CFO left, and just last year, their CEO retired. They have responded by continuing to invest in new product innovation and cutting their workforce to control costs. Their revenue continues to grow at around 8% per year, and so far it appears that they've maintained their leading competitive position in electronic payments. If they can right the ship, there is significant opportunity here. They're trading at a 5% free cash flow yield, a 13 PE, which is 8 points below the S&P 500 average of 21, and they're trading at 2 times sales and 3 times book. Regardless of the metric, this stock is cheap. Morningstar's fair value estimate comes in at 104 bucks, while CFRA's intrinsic value comes in at 94 bucks. In other words, there's 40 to 50% upside in the stock if they can get their stuff straight. Next, we have Lululemon, an athletic apparel retailer. They're down 39% so far this year, due mainly to lowered 2024 guidance, which took Wall Street's earnings growth estimate of 14% and lowered it down to the 11 to 12% range. 11 to 12% is still quite good, but Wall Street didn't like it. There are some concerns with slowing consumer spending and a recession, which would hit companies like Lululemon particularly hard because they sell luxury items. Robust growth in their revenues, free cash flow, and earnings is still intact, and will be even if sales come in at the 11 to 12 percent range instead of 14 percent. Morningstar rates them as having a narrow moat based primarily on their brand. They're in a highly competitive market, but they're often credited with being the creator of the athleisure apparel trend and are viewed by women as the top of the line in athleisure apparel. Their 35 percent return on invested capital and 15 percent net margins are also extremely high for their industry and indicative of a competitive advantage. Morningstar's fair value estimate comes in at 285 bucks. CFRA's intrinsic value calculation comes in at 374, which means we're looking at about 15% upside potential. Or if you compare it to the 479 bucks per share it was trading at earlier this year, there is 49% potential upside in this stock. Our third stock is Ulta Beauty, which is the largest specialty beauty retailer in the US. Ulta is down 20% this year, and the story is very similar to Lululemon. They recently lower guidance, and there are some concerns with slowing consumer spending and a potential recession on the horizon. But the fundamentals of their business remain incredibly strong with 10 to 15% revenue and free cash flow growth, and earnings per share is growing even faster. Morningstar rates them as having a narrow moat due primarily to its brand. They carry more makeup, hair care, skin care, fragrance, and bath products and brands than any other specialty beauty retailer in America. And with its 40 million customer loyalty program members, they have access to a boatload of customer behavioral data that feeds right into their marketing efforts. The fact that they consistently generate 30% plus returns on capital employed is a strong indication that they enjoy one and probably more competitive advantages in their industry. Morningstar's fair value estimate comes in at 410 bucks, while CFRA's intrinsic value calculation comes in at 614 bucks, which means we're looking at about 59% upside potential. Or if you compare it to the $567 per share it was trading at earlier this year, there's 47% potential upside in this stock. Our fourth stock is one everybody knows, and it's Starbucks, the coffee shop. Starbucks is down 12% so far this year due to a huge miss in their uh, last earnings release. 
There's no sugar cutting it. It was bad. They reported a 3% decline in same source sales, a 2% drop in total revenue with sales in China dropping a massive 11%, and they reduced their full year's sales guidance. They also cited concerns around slowing consumer spending. The quarter was so bad that the stock dropped 18% as a result. It has since recovered about half of that decline, but remains down 12% on the year. These are problems that are expected to take some time for Starbucks to work through, so if you invest in the stock, you have to be willing to hold it for the long term to really reap the rewards. Starbucks has a competitive advantage based on its brand and a cost advantage versus its smaller competitors. Starbucks has a world-renowned brand that is instantly recognizable across the globe, and its focus on quality has allowed them to charge premium prices for their products with much lower advertising expenses and capital expenditures than most of their peers. They also have a cost advantage due to their size, which helps them take advantage of volume discounts from their suppliers. And they have an estimated 33 million rewards account users that provide access to customer spending habits, which is invaluable to this type of company. Morningstar's fair value estimate comes in at 96 bucks, while CFRA's intrinsic value calculation comes in at 79 bucks, which means we're looking at about a 19% upside potential in this stock. The last strong stock that is currently in a dip is Adobe. Before we get into Adobe, I must notify you that I have money invested in their stock. Adobe is down 23% year to date due to muted guidance on their Q1 earnings call where they widened the range of earnings projections rather than increasing them and Wall Street didn't like that. And the second reason is, in my opinion, a ridiculous concern about how cloud and subscription based companies have a suboptimal pricing model for the coming AI revolution. Instead of charging based on use, they charge per seat, which can eat into their margins because of the heavy resource load of AI applications. The argument goes that their costs will increase as usage increases, but the revenues will not. This is ridiculous in my opinion, at least as far as Adobe is concerned, because they could easily start, and in many cases they already do, charge based on usage for the AI applications where the user gets some credits as part of their subscription, but if they want to use more than that, they have to purchase more credits. So this is a non-issue for me. Now, if we look at Adobe, it's a very strong company with nicely increasing revenues, cash flows, earnings, and they're highly profitable with little debt. Additionally, they have a strong competitive position in the markets they do business in. They were the pioneers of the PDF file and photo and video editing software, and the creative industry has standardized around their products as a result. If we take a look at all the application that Adobe offers, like Photoshop, Premiere Pro, Acrobat, Illustrator, Stock Photos, Firefly, etc., they are all immediately recognizable offerings that are used by a very high percentage of individual creators and creative businesses around the world. And as more and more creators adopt their applications as their go-to creative software, it becomes imperative for others to follow suit so that they can successfully collaborate with other creative professionals. They also benefit from switching costs. Once a business adopts the Adobe suite and they train their staff on these applications, it becomes expensive, time-consuming, and operationally risky to move to a competing suite of creative products. Let's take a look at the price estimates. Morningstar Fair Value Estimate comes in at $610 a share. CFRA has their intrinsic value at $446 a share, which means we're looking at about 33% upside potential. Well, there you have it. Five strong stocks currently in a dip. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below, and we'll see you in the next video. Make sure you like and subscribe so you don't miss any videos when I release them. It's a quick and free way that you can help me grow this channel if you find this content valuable.